morning. Welcome to our service for Sunday the 21st of March, the fifth Sunday of Lent. My name's Ollie. I'm a vicar here in West London. This is the fifth of our little sermon series looking at the invitation of Jesus, the come to me all you who are weary and heavy laden. And we've been looking at that over the last few weeks and it got me thinking this week about invitations. And if we have had an invitation that has really made us want to go and visit something or go to an event, I remember this time last year, I was lucky enough to be invited to an event. It was actually around bereavement at Lambeth Palace. Now, Lambeth Palace is the home of the Archbishop of Canterbury. It's an actual palace in central London. Um, he's the head of the Church of England, of the Anglican Church around the world. And when I heard that I was invited, my first thought was, <laughs> who on earth am I uh, to be invited to this? I haven't done anything special um, around bereavement. I'm, I'm not famous. Anyway, I was so pleased to be invited. And uh, on the evening, it was a really cold, uh, wet, miserable early March evening, just before the lockdown. And I went to the palace and I turned up and it was amazing. It was beautiful and there were some quite famous people there and there was amazing cake and uh, we heard some, some of the things about this initiative. And I was so pleased that I had been invited. It felt like the Archbishop of had said to me, Ollie, I want you to come and spend time with me in my home. It turned out that in reality, he wasn't actually there. He just recorded a video message, but still the invitation from somebody to come into their amazing home really made me want to go. And I wonder if it's like that with God, because we've been looking at over these few weeks about how the invitation of God is for, for us to come to him and spend time with him. And that should be the most exciting invitation that any of us can ever have, because it's not just a human palace we're being invited to for an evening or for a reception. It, it's an invitation for all of our lives to, to, to live in the palace of palaces, in the home of the King of Kings, to be with the King for all eternity. It's a really, really good invitation. And it should be something that, we, that we're always longing for, looking out for. Is he inviting me? Whether or not we're excited or sad, hopeful or dying or whatever it is, it's his invitation. It's, it's his heart. Jesus' heart is Will you come and spend time with me? May we know that again today as we look at what it is, as he invites us, as he is gentle and humble. Let me pray. God, this morning, uh, or whenever we're watching this, may your Holy Spirit stir in us that invitation. Come to me, come to me. And may we know it is very good news for us whatever's going on in our lives. Amen. All who are thirsty All who are weak Come to the fountain Dip your heart in the stream of life Let the pain and the sorrow Washed away in the waves of his mercy, as deep cries out. Sorrow, be wise.
washed away in the waves of his mercy as deep cries out Invitation of Jesus is so good and it, it's even good when we've messed up and um, the good news is that it's not that God knows all the ways we've messed up and he wants us to feel guilty about it he knows all the ways ways we've messed up and he wants us to be helped with it and that's why we confess those things um, those true things on our mind that we know that we're getting wrong and he wants to take them away from us the sacrifice of God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart God will not despise. So let us come to the Lord who is full of compassion and acknowledge our transgressions in penitence and faith. Take a moment to think of those things uh, that are on your conscience. God, we confess to you our selfishness and lack of love. Fill us with your spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Confess to you our fear and failure in sharing our faith. Fill us with your spirit. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Confess to you our stubbornness and lack of trust. Fill us with your spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. So may Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. And lead you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our prayer for the fifth Sunday of Lent. Most merciful God, who by the death and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, delivered and saved the world, grant that by faith in him who suffered on the cross, we may triumph in the power of his victory. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who's alive and reigns with you, one God, now and forever. Amen. Dave is going to come and share something for the kids and then Jenny is going to read to us. Hi kids and mums and dads at home. Just for a few minutes I'm going to try and explain a little bit about what it means for Jesus to be gentle. Uh, we read that Jesus says I am gentle and humble in heart and I think Ollie later is going to explain a bit about that to us. Just a few verses later in this part of the Bible we read that Jesus is going to be someone like this. A bruised reed he will not break and a smouldering wick he will not snuff out. He will not snuff out. What does that mean? A bruised reed he will not break. A reed 
is um, a bit like uh, a plant. You find it by rivers. I didn't really have a reed, but I had um, these little flowers, which were um, left over from the Mothering Sunday flowers that uh, we got my wife, Rachel. And um, now, uh, I don't know if you can see, but it's got a bit bent here. Uh, you could say that it is bruised. This could be a bit like a bruised reed. Now, when something like this is a bit, this flower is a little bit old and it's not maybe as pretty as it was and the, the reed is broken, you might be tempted just to snap it and throw it away. It's not really good for anything anymore. Uh, what we read is that Jesus is described as a person who will not break a bruised reed. He, he he's gentle. Um, he wants to preserve it. If anything, he would try to fix it and bring repair and life and see this as good and something that doesn't need to be just thrown away. That's, so that's part of the image of what we learn about Jesus, gentle enough not to break a bruised reed. Uh, the verse also says that Jesus will not um, snuff out a smouldering wick. Uh, a candle, as you know, um, has a wick for the fire to light and to stay lit. Uh, and as the candle gets low, it might smolder. It might start to smoke and get very small. And again, the temptation is that we might just blow it out. <sighs> uh, but Jesus says, no, I want, I, he's somebody who's going to keep the light, protect it, and try to fan it into flame and make it bright again. What this shows us is that Jesus is interested in being gentle and careful with everybody and anything, including the weak ones, the ones that people forget, the ones that people might even want to reject or throw away. And he wants to bring protection and life and renewal and repair. And that tells us a little bit of what it means for Jesus to be gentle. A bruised reed he will not break and a smouldering wick he will not snuff out. I will exalt you, my God the King. I will praise your name for ever and ever. Every day I will praise you and extol your name for ever and ever. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. One generation commends your works to another. They tell of your mighty acts. They speak of the glorious splendor of your majesty and I will meditate on your glorious works. They tell of the power of your awesome works, and I proclaim your great deeds. They celebrate your abundant goodness and joyfully sing of your righteousness. The Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and rich in love. The Lord is good to all. He has compassion on all he has made. All your works praise you, Lord. Your faithful people extol you. They tell of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your might, so that all people may know of your mighty acts and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and your dominion endures through all generations. The Lord is trustworthy in all he promises, and faithful in all he does. The Lord upholds all who fall and lifts up all who are bowed down. The eyes of all look to you, and you give them their food at the proper time. You open your hand and satisfy the desires of every living thing. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and faithful in all he does. The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. He fulfills the desires of those who fear him. He hears their cry and saves them. The Lord watches over all who love him, but all the wicked he will destroy. My mouth will speak in praise of the Lord, let every creature 
praise his holy name for ever and ever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today we look at Jesus saying, come as he is gentle. Just today, this book was delivered. And uh, as I read it, I am tempted to say, rather than listen to me, just go and buy this book. Uh, it's called Gentle and Lowly. It's by, actually by the brother of a friend of mine. Um, it's by Dane Ortland. And if you read a book this year about Jesus and what he's like, about his heart, then please read this book. I highly, highly recommend it. Get a copy of it as soon as possible. Get a copy for you and for your friend. I promise I'm not on commission. Um, and it, I suggest you get a copy through the sanandrewsbookshop.co.uk. Uh, they have it on special offer for just under nine pounds at the moment. I promise I'm not on commission, but this is a really, really good book. I highly recommend it for you. And it's helped me uh, even today as I was preparing for this talk. God is gentle. Jesus says, I am gentle. He is gentle and humble in heart. Now, there are three other places in the New Testament where the same word translated gentle here is used. The first is in the Beatitudes, when Jesus says that the gentle will inherit the whole earth. Think about that. The gentle, those who are gentle, will inherit the whole of the earth. Secondly, when it's describing Jesus coming and how he is gentle in that he's coming on a donkey, says something about who he is. And thirdly, when Peter is talking about wives and how they're encouraged to be gentle in spirit. Hopefully all three of those will make a bit more sense as we look at what it means. Really, this gentle that Jesus is talking about is the opposite of arrogance, the opposite of forceful narcissism. Um, this is not someone who knocks aside other people with their power, but someone who uses their power to welcome and admit, break down barriers, People often seem to think, even I'm tempted to think, that the most important and powerful are those who can win arguments or battles, who have clever words or physical strength or money or influence. Yet that's not the example of Jesus. He has all the power anyone could ever have and far, far more. And yet his power is like the gentleness of a parent picking up a newborn child. All the power in that relationship, but yet completely gentle. Don't you love that's how Jesus is? I am gentle, he says, and humble in heart. And we looked at being humble in some of our recent sermons, and I'm not going to preach all of those again. But the humble that Jesus is talking about is, is the person who is happy to be with the lowly, the seemingly unimportant. Do you remember I spoke about how um, being humble means that we, we choose to be, to share our lives with those who cannot maybe obviously benefit us, those who aren't going to uh, give us more money or influence. Jesus is happiest with the lowly. He's not like royalty, shut in a palace behind high walls and gates with bodyguards all around him. Jesus, his palace is, 
is very different. His palace is in the dirt. His palace is in the home of the broken or despised. His palace is the bed of the addicted or the cell of the convicted. His palace is the body of a person selling their body for money. The body of the schizophrenic or depressed. Jesus can live in mansions. He can be with those who impress us on Instagram or in newspapers, who have big jobs, bigger wages. He doesn't think those people are worse. When He doesn't think we're worse or better when we're powerful or broken. He knows that all the accolades of this world matter for a moment, a millisecond at best. He says, I'm here for you. My palace is in you. Especially when others reject you or hurt you, ignore you or abuse you. God is, is not an overbearing taskmaster. This gentleness and humility is power, not above us, standing over us, beating us down, but the kindest of kind who wants us to flourish, who wants every person to be built up, the brokenhearted, the lost. He is unstintingly kind and caring to us and others. When we, when we hear of Jesus and maybe when we see him uh, being this gentle, powerful king, he's unstoppable in his kindness. Don't think this is weakness. There's a world of difference between weakness and gentleness and humility. Some of the strength Jesus has is exactly in his humility and gentleness. Isn't that a better way of being strong rather than being overbearing, being humble? And when we see Jesus, when we see his heart, that he approaches us with gentleness and kindness, doesn't it inspire us to do two things, I think? And the first, it makes, it makes us think, I want to be like that. I want to be gentle and humble. I want to approach all the difficulties of my life with that heart. But if I'm honest, I find that very hard. I want to be gentle and humble in how I live and deal with those around me, but uh, so in, so far, um, so often, I end up thinking of myself, don't we? Uh, what am I feeling? I'm feeling hurt. I'm feeling vulnerable. I feel like I need to sort this out. I'm sad. I need loving, I need caring. So often I end up not being gentle, but selfish. What about me? Don't you know what's going on for me? Or I'm not gentle and humble because actually I want to impress people. I, I am proud. I am proud. I'd like to be, I post something on Instagram and there are a thousand likes instantaneously. I'd love emails to be pinging into my computer every day saying, Ollie, oh, we've heard how amazing you are. We'd love you to come and share your blessings of preaching with us at conferences and churches. And I want to be impressing people, not humbly, gently doing things that people don't notice. 
maybe things people think are unimportant. But then maybe the kindness and gentleness of Jesus, we see it and we think, this is actually so much less work. Um, I don't need to defend myself. I don't need to impress people. I just need to be gentle and humble and close to Jesus. And actually that sounds really appealing. It sounds peaceful. So maybe we see Jesus and we think, I want to be like that. If that's you, and I know it's me, would you, would you pray? You might want to stand up even. I know it sounds crazy you're watching this wherever you're watching it. Um, you might want to stand, you might want to put your arm up, you might put your hands out. You know, we cannot, cannot do the things that we want to do in our own strength. You know, I know I am too selfish and too proud, but the Holy Spirit can change our hearts, change how we act. So Holy Spirit, would you, um, would you enable me, would you enable us to be gentle and humble in heart in how we deal with those around us, how we deal with those who don't have power and influence, how we deal with those who annoy or irritate us with those who do have power and influence. May we treat them all the same. May we do it because we know that that is how you feel about us. You are gentle to us and kind to us, that you've welcomed us. You've, you've, we're, we're safe with you in the, in the palace of the King of Kings, so we can treat everyone with gentleness and kindness. Holy Spirit, may you make that possible for, for us. May it be possible even this week as, as we're interacting with people. May we, may we feel that we have the words, not from our own arrogance or selfishness, but your words. May we see you at work. Holy Spirit, change us. I know I need changing. Please change us. Make us gentle and humble of heart. Have a seat if you've stood up. And secondly, we see the gentleness of Jesus. And some of us, we just need that. I need his gentle kindness. Maybe you're thinking that I need somebody. Uh, I need a kind of God who is gentle and kind to me. I don't know why you need that. Uh, there are a million reasons why we need that. All of us need it every day. But maybe for, for some of you, um, you need that because you are you are judging yourself. Maybe others are judging you, but you're judging yourself and, and you're beating yourself up. And, um, and God never beats us up. He, he wants to be gentle and kind to you today. Maybe it's, maybe it's in a, um, in a place of hopelessness, there's there's a hopeless situation, and um, and and you. I don't know if God's gonna sort it out overnight, but He wants to you to know His kindness. Holy Spirit, please, uh, please may that be true. All those watching. If, if you need to be free from that guilt, which doesn't come from God, may you be free. May you find freedom. If you need his kindness because you feel without hope, may you have his hope. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Psalm 145, as we heard, says the Lord is gracious and merciful 
slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. May you know his abounding steadfast love. The Lord is good to all. His compassion is over all that he has made. May you know his compassion. The Lord is just in all his ways and kind in all his doings. Where you need justice, may you know his kindness. The Lord is near to all who call on him. May you know him closer to you today than you can expect or imagine. Amen. And now let's turn our hearts, our minds to praise. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul. Worship his holy name. Sin like never before, O oh my soul, I worship your holy name. Let us pray. 
in the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, you promised through your Son, Jesus Christ, to hear us when we pray in faith. Strengthen Sarah and Graham, our bishops, our Archdeacon Richard, Sarah, our area dean, and Dave and Ollie here in the parish, and all your church in the service of Christ, that those who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless and guide Elizabeth, our Queen, and all the royal family. We pray for the continued recovery of the Duke of Edinburgh, now back with the Queen at Windsor Castle after his month in hospital. We pray for the Duke and Duchess of Sussex and the senior members of the royal family as they try to patch up their differences. And we pray that the media would give them time to be reconciled. We pray for our Prime Minister, Boris Johnson, and all members of Parliament and guide them in the way ahead as they ease the lockdown in the coming weeks. We pray for all the world's leaders as they endeavour to combat coronavirus, and especially those European countries who are concerned about the Astra AstraZeneca vaccine. We pray for all who work in the NHS, in care homes, and our scientists involved in medical research as we come up to the anniversary of the first national lockdown this coming Tuesday. We can pray for the continued successful rollout of the vaccine. We pray for the persecuted church and oppressed peoples of the world, remembering especially those in Myanmar, Syria, Sudan, and the Uyghur people in China. Give wisdom to all in authority and direct this and every nation in the ways of justice and of peace, that we may honor one another and seek the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give grace to us, our families and friends, and to all our neighbors, that we may serve Christ in one another and love as he loves us. We pray for all those who are lonely, those near to death, or who are facing loss, and those fearful of venturing out at this time. We pray for those who have been made redundant as a result of the effect of coronavirus on their employers or businesses, and those who are finding it financially stressful at this time. We pray for all teachers, students and school children who are now back in school for the first time in many months. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind or spirit. We especially pray for Wynne Jones, David Green, Janice, Linda and Ted, Don and Audrey, and other members of our congregations who need our prayers at this time. We also remember the family and friends of Sarah Everard, murdered earlier this month. And we pray for the relationship between local communities and the police. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. And remembering the words of Jesus recorded in Matthew's gospel, come to me all, who, all you who are weary and burdened and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me for I am gentle and humble in heart and you will find rest for your souls for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear us as we remember those who have died in the faith of Christ. According to your promises, grant us with them a share in your eternal kingdom. Rejoicing in the fellowship of all your saints, we commend ourselves and the whole of creation to your unfailing love. Merciful Father, Accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Brian, for leading us in our prayers. 
Let's pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. A few notices for us as we come up to Easter. This Tuesday, that's the 23rd, is a day um, of national reflection. That means we'll be giving some time during the day to reflect on the past year and all the things that have been going on. Our Facebook morning prayer at 8.30 a.m. will be focused around that. And can I encourage you at midday, uh, to just give a moment of silence, maybe to give the coming year to God with um, all our hopes and uncertainties and fears, everything that's going on. Then we have Holy Week that starts next Sunday, uh, the 28th, um, Palm Sunday. And we've got a variety of things and do check out uh, all the different information newsletter, uh, but I'll run through them uh, so you get an idea. So on Palm Sunday, St Mary's will be open for prayer. And when I say open for prayer, it's open for people on their own or with their households to come and spend some time in the church buildings. It'll be open for prayer from 9am to midday on the Sunday and St John's from 10am to 3pm. Our YouTube service will be live as normal at 9.45am and Kids Storytime at 6.30pm. Then on Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday of Holy Week we'll have morning prayer on Facebook at 8.30am every day. And then on the Thursday, which is called Maundy Thursday, St John's will be open for prayer from 10am to 3pm and then there'll be an online service at 7pm as we think about the last night that Jesus spent with his friends, his disciples. Then on the Friday, Good Friday, St Mary's will be open for prayer from 10am to 3pm and we will have a live online service from 2 to 3 p.m. for the last hour with Jesus at the cross. Then on Easter Sunday, the 4th of March, there will be a dawn service at St Mary's. That will be outside, so if you plan to come along, then do wear appropriate clothes. It could be pretty chilly at 6 a.m. in the morning and the service will finish about 7.30 and that will be live streamed online as well. And then St Mary's will be open after that till about midday. Our YouTube service will go live as normal at 9.45 and then St John's will be open for prayer from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. And lastly, Kids Storytime will happen at 6.30 p.m. Do look out for those and connect with Dave or I in the buildings and online. And then we have an exciting new initiative starting just after Easter on the Wednesday lunchtime, the so 7th and the 14th of April. We have something called the Family Food Club. And the simple idea is <clears throat> that we will provide a fresh home cooked hot meal takeaway that families can come and connect, uh, collect from St John's Hall. There'll also be a pack of some food and some other goodies. And this is for families who would really benefit from it simply. It might be because they'd um, want a break from cooking or it'd struggle to get all the things to feed their children every uh, day over the holidays. Do either think about if it might be the right thing for you or if there are others who you'd like to encourage to register. They need to register so we know how many people are coming and what they need and uh, do that. Uh, you can do that online. There's information in the newsletter or contact Dave and I and we can tell you how to register for that. Do let people know uh, who would be interested in benefiting from the Family Food Club. It's going to be awesome. Oh, I think that's all our notices for this service. 
let me pray a prayer of blessing for you. Christ, give you grace to put aside all those things to distract and confuse and to come close to him for he is gentle and humble of heart. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen.